Hello, this is Americami Minute. I'm your host, Caleb James. With me, as always, Mr. Spencer Church. What's that? We haven't brought back that. We did. We do that every ten episodes, I think. Oh, what's up? What's that? Like, like no. I, the way I feel, the Zoomers don't know what that is. They weren't even born when those Budweiser commercials aired. Even worse, fucking scary <laughs> movie movies. Oh, <laughs> that, really, like, you know, that, that, kind of, that kind of brought it back. That did bring it back. Today we are diving back into first person singular stories by Haruki Murakami. Uh, we are on the third story this week, and that story is. That's not. He's not a trumpet player. The sax. How do you do sax? I don't know how to mimic a sax. No. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I don't know. Uh, Charlie Parker plays Bossa Nova. All right, Spencer. I'm gonna lay it down dirty for you. Okay. After I give a brief synopsis of the story, unlike last uh, week's episode, which I felt like we were actually able to break down because it was not just an enjoyable story, but it just you know it was ripe with nostalgia and different topics we could talk about. This one, on the other hand, was a little different. Uh, it starts off with a fake article this guy wrote in college about Charlie Parker and an album Charlie Parker called Charlie Parker Plays Bossa Nova uh, that he supposedly made in 1965 or 63 or something. Like 10 years after Charlie Parker died. Charlie yeah. Parker died in 1955. I'm not a huge Charlie Parker guy. I never listened to a lot of his stuff. He's a saxophone player, but like died 1955. I mean, I mean, I like me some Thelonious Monk, some Miles Davis. Even if I'm feeling a little freaky, some Delta Blues with Robert Johnson. Um, but Charlie Parker, I just I never got into that. I mainly know him from uh, being talked about in the movie Whiplash with J.K. Simmons and uh, the guy's head who looks like a toe. Uh, Fuck's that guy's name. I just know that he was in the newest, shittiest Fantastic Four. Movie. Yeah, that guy. Uh, he's not that bad of an actor. He's, no, he's, he's good in movies. He's good. He's just, he looks unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It is. He looks like a normal guy. That's the problem. Yeah. You think that would, like, uh. Yeah, but in Hollywood, for some reason, that throws you off. Uh, Miles Teller, I believe his name is. Anyway, read this up here. Uh, so it starts off with a story, I don't know, it's only a couple pages about, it's, it's essentially just an essay or an article on Charlie Parker and this fake story about his fucking music or whatever. I don't know. It goes into the guy is telling how he wrote it in college as kind of a spoof, you know, like a joke. And people, some people took it seriously. The editor didn't know anything about Charlie Parker, so he thought that was a real critique of Charlie Parker's music. I don't know. It's not really that interesting, honestly. That article thing he wrote is interspliced throughout the story. Obviously, Haruki Murakami loves jazz and apparently loves Charlie Parker, so you get some brief love letter like that to Charlie Parker, like just the way he's talking about the music and stuff. I didn't really care for this story. No. Uh, it did get a brief bit interesting when... At the, at the very end. Yeah, because this guy, again, just an unnamed narrator, he... Well, no, I... Well... I figured, well, it's the guy who wrote the uh, the wrote the story, but yeah, I don't think he ever. Yeah, he's not. He's not a. He has no name. None of these narrators have names in these stories so far. But this guy, he wrote this thing in college about. He came up with the album title, Charlie Parker plays Bossa Nova, and came up with a track list and who's on the tracks and stuff. Well, when he's older, he is in a random uh, used record shop in New York, and he happens to find. Charlie Parker plays Bossa Nova, and he looks at it, and it looks like a bootleg, but it has all the tracks that he wrote in his fake story, and he's like, oh, man, this is interesting, but it was 35 bucks, and that was too much for him. Yeah. He's like, you know what, I should buy it, but yeah, I'm not going to buy it, it's just a goof. He leaves, immediately regrets it, after he goes to dinner, and then he regrets it, thinking, oh, man, maybe that was some kind of sign or whatever. So he goes back, and the store's closed, so he goes the next day. And he talks to the owner of the store, the you know who's running the store, guy who does all the orders and stuff, has no idea what he's talking about. This record doesn't exist. He's very disappointed, and I don't know, it just essentially ends on nothing. Like he's just, oh, this is a true story. I tell you, you believe it? Like that that record apparently existed. Just no, you know what? I'm wrong. It didn't just end on that. Before yeah. that, he has a dream where he meets Charlie Parker. I thought that was after. That's after the record part. Yeah. Uh, he has a dream where he meets Charlie Parker, and Charlie Parker plays one of the songs off the album for him, like, directly, specifically for him, and he gives his whole, I don't know, mantra about dying at 34 years old or something, and 
the unnamed narrator. It touches him. He wakes up and writes down what Charlie Parker said to him, but he can't remember uh, the song that he played. He can't remember any of the, the you know, the tune. It may seem like he might, like he had, like he had a couple of dreams from Parker. I thought it made it. No, I think it was just one long dream. And then he woke up at three thirty a.m. I, I didn't care for that story. It uh, also, again, like much like the first story, didn't have much. This one even less so. Did not have much of a Mirakami touch. Like when you read it, you wouldn't think that was Mirakami, other than maybe the subject matter, because it didn't have like the weird. Because even though this did have a dream sequence, it wasn't like the weird dream like sequences Mirakami normally writes. Like this one did describe uh, the scent of like coffee was prominent, but that's about it. The only thing I would say would probably be you know that could fall into that is finding the mysterious copy of the record that he talked about and, yeah. then, and then disappearing. But that didn't go anywhere. Like yeah. I said, Mirakami normally wraps up his stories. Like he, he wraps up those loose ends. Did not wrap it up. Didn't explain it. Uh, this just seemed like to me that he was listening to some Charlie Parker and just... Uh, just maybe like, had a dream. Yeah, or just had like a weird idea. He's like, hey, what if... Uh, maybe he was listening to that and then some Bossa Nova music and then he was like, you know what? What if Charlie Parker... Made some bossa nova music, even though it came out after he died. Hey, how can we have that, make yeah. that happen? Because it really does just read like somebody just who really enjoys jazz talking about jazz. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, you might like this story. Yeah, like it wasn't bad. It was like I just wanted to not read it when I was reading. It. I was just like, where is this going? Um, nowhere really. Uh, because the end line is pretty weak too. The next story looks like it might be interesting with the Beatles. Yeah. Well, maybe about the Beatles. I know more about the Beatles than I do Charlie Parker. It ends with him talking about Charlie Parker playing that song, Cork Cavado. And then uh, he just says, can you believe it? You better because it happened. It really did. And that's how the story ends. So that's the one, like, if you skip that, I don't think you're missing anything. Yeah. I so, mean, I guess maybe this would be, like, a huge jazz guy. Well, like I said, yeah, if you really enjoy jazz music, you, that might be up your alley. So I, so far, the first story was okay. The second story I enjoyed, this one I did not enjoy. And that's three down, so we got like five more to go. Uh, the next stories in this collection in order. With the Beatles, uh, that'll be next episode. Confessions of a Shinagawa Monkey. I'm interested in that yeah. one. That's when the monkey, once the monkey comes into play, I think it picks up. Carnival, the Yakult Swallows Poetry Collection. I don't know about that one. Uh, then the last story is First Person Singular, which is the title of the book. So maybe it explains why he wrote this. Uh, I think that's where we're going to get, like, how in the synopsis in the back of this said there's a narrator who may or may not be Mirakami. I think it would be that story that that character comes into play. Like I said, I'm interested in the Beatles story and that monkey story. Yeah, I think the monkey be... one's the one that I'm really... Yeah. Uh, well, anytime I've read... Any novel, which is pretty much every novel of Mirakami's that deal with the Beatles or something like that, usually he writes about it in a way that makes you like, oh, that sounds kind of interesting, even though you might not even like the music. Yeah. He does that a lot of classical music, where he's talking about characters listening to classical music, and he describes it in such a way where I'm like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, like, because he goes into, if it's French, he'll go into the French names and stuff. But I'm like, it sounds like, because he'll like talk about the rising crescendo of the music and the you know, like a wave crashing down. Like, he, he describes it in a way you're like, ooh, I actually kind of want to listen to that song. After reading this, I, I, I picked up, uh, I didn't pick anything up. I picked my phone up, I guess. I listened to some Charlie Parker music on my phone and uh, just sound like saxophone did, did, music. Didn't do nothing for you? No, like I said, I, you know, I like Miles Davis. I like Thelonious Monk. Uh, but That's Charlie, just an awesome name. It is a great name. And you know what is my favorite Thelonious Monk album is? Because I actually do have one, Mad Monk, because that's an awesome <laughs> title. Uh, he's a piano player, by the way. You know who I really been getting into though when I do listen to jazz. I, I mainly listen to jazz when I'm driving at work and I'm getting a little too angry on the yeah. road, so I need to calm down. I listen to some jazz. Uh, John Coltrane. Some. I, uh, I, I thought it was gonna be Kenny uh, G. Yeah. No. Uh, no some John. <laughs> For some reason, I thought you were going to say Kenny the Jet Smith from uh, <laughs> TNT. Yes, he's an awesome. <laughs> NBA TNT. Like, why Kenny the Jet Smith? <laughs> you had no idea. <laughs> no, it's Kenny G. Uh, I do not care for Kenny G. Is it the hair? It's everything. Seems like he just, he seems like one of those pompous guys. I don't know. But uh, John Coltrane is a little more, because I think he plays sax too. 
and he's a little more uh I don't know, entertaining. It's hard. It's I'm not a jazz guy like or any kind of mu- instrumental music. Yeah. I can't describe why why I would like something cuz that kind of music is supposed to just make you feel a certain way unlike uh you know anything with even just lyrics where you know it could be a story you're being told or imagery that you're being told anything instrumental it's just kind of you're listening and you know it might make you feel a certain way uh charlie parker's known for having like fast rhythm and upbeat tempos and stuff it's like gasoline you know, in a club like that's a mexican thing but mexican jazz is a different different genre i do like some mexican music too i don't really seek out mexican music uh Obviously, because I'm not even saying a specific genre of Mexican music, yeah. but whenever I go to any Mexican restaurant and they got down the radio, uh, especially now that I know some Spanish, I'm like, yeah, he's singing about some ladies. I like this. And it's, you know, it's always very romantic. I always like to sometimes listen to music in different languages. Because if you can, like, kind of like it without even knowing what they're saying, like. I've listened to some Japanese hardcore rap. Oh, yeah. And some of it. I think it's good. Like I don't know what they're saying, but it to pumps you, you up. It but pumps to you, you up. It sounds awesome. Yeah, it pumps you up. They could just be like, you know, my teddy bear is red and I got a gat. I, I don't know, but the, the, the way they sound is just exciting. Oh, I guess it would be like, uh, like trap music because trap music to me is kind of dog shit. But if you're in the gym or something and you're just playing it, you're not actually listening to the go- like the shitty lyrics and yeah. the repetitive nature of the lyrics. You're just listening to the bum, 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 like the hardcore beat, which again, much like jazz, you're just listening to the actual music. It's good background music. When I write, if I'm trying to get in a specific mood for a scene, sometimes I will put on uh, different ambiance music or like uh, it had to be in a specific mood, like you know, a really specific scene if I'm going to play some kind of jazz, but usually I'll play some kind of like, like this one I'm writing, I like that IR story I'm working on, like sometimes I'll put on some like Celtic pub music or something, you know, just to get you, kind of put you in that setting. Uh, I have a feeling Haruki Mirakami does that a lot with his writing, I think he's, uh, because when you read his work, sometimes you're like, oh, this man's listening to some funky jazz yeah. right now, he's really diving into the scene, uh, which that kind of makes me wonder, like, what, like, the Hemingways of the world, what kind of music do you think he listened to? ballroom music i don't maybe, know maybe i don't know he probably well, maybe listen. he's one of those guys who probably didn't like music i didn't have time not. for it i feel like he'd be like a spanish music fan oh, pro- oh what, like, cuba you know, yeah cuba music, whatever or any of that stuff fitzgerald definitely was like a high flute and jazz guy i think of, like the great gatsby or something like those big ballroom parties or what do they call that music i, I can't remember now it's not big dance music it's uh because it made a swing music it made like a comeback in the 90s i remember there's a couple like there's a like a year there where they're just having like fucking swing music coming back. Uh but anyway, that's our very short. I tried to extend that if you notice my rambling trying to because we were only at seven minutes. I was like, okay, that can't be it. If I cut out a bunch of the ums and likes, then we're really we're really short here. Hey, a Mere minute. Mere minute. It's in the title. <laughs> uh so first person singular. I did not care for Charlie Parker plays Bossa Nova. Uh, but if you like jazz music more than me, you might get something out of that because it's, you know, obviously it's a, more of a story geared towards jazz fans yeah. and people who might know Charlie Parker's story more than I. I don't really know much about Charlie Parker. I didn't even realize his nickname was Bird until yeah. I read this story. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, yeah, they did call him Bird Whiplash. So uh, thank you for listening and uh, peace be with you. Mm-hmm.